Have you heard about Dirty John, who is the ultimate malignant narcissist? I'm gonna be talking about him and what you can learn from that situation to prevent it and shut it down before it happens and see those red flags in this video. So stay tuned. Hey there, I'm Rebecca Zung. I am an attorney. I am a narcissist negotiation expert. And on this channel and in these videos, I teach you how to shift the dynamic, how to spot narcissists, how to negotiate with them powerfully so you can turn the tides and become the most powerful and the most persuasive person in any room into which you walk. And if that sounds amazing, then I invite you to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. All right. So I watched this mini series. I actually listened to the podcast first, and I definitely highly recommend that you listen to the podcast. You will be riveted. You will be on the edge of your seat. Apparently it was like the most listened to podcast uh, at one point. And then it became a mini series. It ran on some channel. I don't even remember what it was. I think it ended up on Netflix at some point. And it was absolutely riveting. So here's what happened. There was this woman who was in her 50s, very successful, attractive woman, had absolutely everything, children, very lucrative practice. She was a designer, interior designer, really had everything that she wanted, except that she really wanted love in her life. She wanted a man in her life. She wanted to have that piece of of, of life. And so she met this guy, she met him online and he seemed to be absolutely perfect, really great looking guy, seemed amazing, seemed wonderful. Doctor presented himself as a doctor, presented himself as an anesthesiologist right away from the beginning though, there was like, there were some red flags, but she didn't want to see them. So he comes back to her apartment or her house after the first date. And on the first date, she did notice that, you know, he wanted to lay on the bed right away. He wanted to stay right away. And, and she was like, no, 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 you're not going to do that. He leaves um, that first night, but he did want to move things along very, very quickly. There's your first red flag. Wants to speed the relationship along very quickly, but seemed perfect, seemed amazing. There were some other red flags, you know, didn't seem to quite have an explanation for certain things. Things weren't adding up, didn't really have a family, didn't really have any, you know, much of a past, but things were he just absolutely was so charming, so charismatic, so good looking. Here he is a doctor and absolutely came on super strong, which is what they do. That's how they are. And, you know, really noticed all the wonderful things that she wanted, you know, so here's this busy professional woman who didn't have time to take care of herself. So what's he doing? He's making smoothies for her every morning. He's taking care of her dry cleaning. He's running around doing errands for her. I mean, so how wonderful is that? But of course he gets up in the morning, he's putting on his scrubs. He makes it look like he's going out, but he wants to move in right away. Immediately wants to move into her place, but she never saw his place. Isn't that a red flag? But she doesn't look at it. She doesn't listen to it. She doesn't see it. Her children are saying things to her like, hey, Mom, this isn't adding up. He doesn't seem to be a good guy. Why doesn't he have a house? Why, why doesn't he have a family? Why aren't we seeing things? She's like not listening to them because all she sees is this great looking guy who's paying attention to her, lavishing things on her, taking care of her, doing all the things that she wanted, right? But she's not, you know, wanting to be all of that because she just wanted the attention. He's loving on her. He's, he's giving her that. 
and immediately wants to take over her finances. And again, a red flag. Where's his money? Not, not looking at that. Here's these things. She's catching him in lies. She's not paying attention to it. And by the way, if you want to know more about what happens when you catch narcissists in lies, you can definitely check out my video on that topic. And here's what's also happening. When she does start to try to question him, when she does start to try to say, hey, you know, these things aren't adding up, he gets more and more moody. He lashes out at her. And, you know, there's an overlay of other things that start to happen. And she, she actually starts to get afraid. She starts to worry about what's going to happen. She starts to actually question, but she doesn't, she doesn't want him to know that she's questioning. And, and I don't, I don't want to give away the ending because it's an absolutely crazy story and it becomes very, very harrowing, which you, and you should definitely check it out because it's, it's an insane story. For sure, there were, there were red flags that she just didn't want to see because he did make her feel good. And she just wanted to see what she wanted to see. And he was absolutely the quintessential narcissist and probably a malignant narcissist. And hey, there may have been an overlay of other things too. You know, sociopath, and there may have been some other things too, you know. But for sure... There was that love bombing, that moving in right away. There were the red flags. So one of the things I can tell you is like, for example, one of the lies that he got caught in is that, you know, he wasn't a doctor. He turned out to be a nurse anesthetist and the daughter found his diploma and it said nurse anesthetist. And when she, the woman questioned him on it, he said, oh, I am a doctor because it's, you know, I got a doctorate that, you know, the, the degree is the same amount of schooling as a doctorate. So it is like a doctor. And so I wasn't lying. You know, they kind of like take things and they spin them and they make it seem almost like you're crazy for questioning me on this. So you just have to have your eyes wide open. And, and not ignore those red flags when you're going into these re relationships. And I had it too. When I was dealing with a narcissist in a business situation, I saw the red flags. I saw them right from the beginning and I chose not to see them. I chose to continue on even though I saw them. And that was my mistake. And so you have to have your eyes wide open. And I want you to write that in the comments right now. Eyes wide open. From now on, eyes wide open. Write that down. Eyes wide open. For me too, I'm going to say that. You know, especially when you're dealing with narcissists, because I'm telling you what, when that mask comes off and they show their true colors, it is uh, harrowing, even for coverts. I mean, I've seen it. I mean, it's horrible. I actually did a video on that as well. I mean, when that mask comes off, they are horrible, absolutely horrible. And, you know, the, the mistake is uh, for a lot of people is they think that they can apply the regular rules of negotiating with, uh, you know, with regular people to what it's like to negotiate with narcissists. You can't, you know, in some ways you can, but in a lot of ways you can't, you know, like a lot of people, they teach about how to have a certain amount of empathy and, and all of that and, and, and how to have a two-sided co conversation. And yes, both sides want to be heard. And, and yeah, you need to do all of that. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, it, it's, it's a different kind of a situation. I'm just telling you that right now. You need to employ my slay methodology. You need to have strategy. You need to have leverage. You need to learn how to ethically manipulate the manipulator. You need to understand that narcissistic supply is what's driving them. And you need to understand that the other side is seriously trying to take you down. And sometimes it's, it's at any cost, even at their own cost, even at their own expense sometimes, because they're willing to do that. And you need to understand concepts like narcissistic supply and leverage. And that's what I teach. And so you know, eyes wide open from now on, right? Don't ignore those red flags, see them, know them, spot them, 
shut them down ahead of time. When you see them, run away. And if you're having to negotiate with one right now, make sure that you grab my free Crush My Negotiation prep worksheet. Do not walk into that negotiation without it. It's totally free. It's an ebook. It's yours at winmynegotiation.com. Why would you negotiate without it? I've had people tell me they've won their entire negotiations with it, and it's totally free. Winmynegotiation.com. If you like this video, give it a like, give it a share. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, do that now. Subscribe, hit that no notification bell. Join my free private Facebook group. Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. I am so glad that you stopped by. Remember, today is always a great day to start negotiating your best life. And I will definitely see you in the next video.